It's been a while since I've done a review of a 12 volt lithium ion phosphate battery, and that's because quite frankly, they're all pretty much the same and it's kind of boring. That is until I saw this one. This one is unique. The reasons are pretty obvious. I mean, it's a group 31 battery, but look at this, 1,920 watt hours of storage and a more powerful BMS. So today I'm gonna to run this through some tests. I'm gonna talk about the features and we're gonna see if this bigger storage and more powerful BMS is the best solution for your off-grid setup. So stay tuned, we're gonna to get to the bottom of that today. Let's see what it came shipped at. 1333, this is pretty standard. Now I'm gonna talk about all the stats of the battery later at the end of the video, because I really wanna jump into the testing right up front. I don't wanna waste your time, I wanna show you how what this battery can do, because I'm interested to see what a battery can do. But there's two things I wanna talk about before we get into the testing, because it's really important to the testing. It says it can do a maximum discharge current of 110 amps and overcurrent discharge protection of 300 amps. So I really wanna jump into that testing and see, can it do that? How well does it perform? So I'm gonna charge it up real quick and we're gonna jump in and we're gonna see what this battery can do. The battery is fully charged now. Standard charging is 30 amps. I have a 50 amp charger, it handled that no problem. It does do up to 110 amps charging, which is pretty astounding. Again, I have a 50 amp charger, so I wasn't able to test that. It also easily passed the capacity test. I wasn't concerned about that at all. I knew it would, and it had no problem doing that. So now I have it connected to the Beast. This is a Punisher. This is a 4,000 watt 12 volt inverter that can do up to 7,000 watt surge. So this is going to push this battery to the breaking point. So I'm going to start out nice and easy and then we're going to push it. We're going to see if it can hold 110 amps continuously. Then we're going to see what happens when we push 300 amps. Is the overcurrent protection going to kick on? Is it going to shut down? Is it going to come back easily? Let's find out. We are going to push this battery to its absolute complete limit. So we're at about 77 amps with the space heater on high. I have a heat gun, I'm gonna put this on low. This should give us about 110, 120 amps. So 120 amps. I'm gonna turn on the timer. We're gonna see if it can do 120 amps for five minutes, 10 minutes. Let's see what it can do. So that's about five minutes in and uh, just shut down. All right, so we know it can do 120 amps. So there is the 125 amps with the, the um, space heater. Now I'm gonna turn on that shot back. Get this timer going. You can see we're at 240 amps. That's uh, minute 43, turn the load off. That's impressive. I mean, that's a heavy, heavy load. And um, it ran it for almost two full minutes. I wanna show you something that I don't think is necessarily a problem, but I do wanna show you this. So see how it's um, at 3.5. So the BMS is not letting this battery come back on. But I think it's because temperature, because we're running it so hot. Well, just as I suspected, after a few minutes, the battery cooled down and the BMS let it turn back on. I just want to do a couple more tests just to uh, be completely thorough. So let's uh, turn the space heater back on. We're at our 125. The timer on. The shot back on. Now let's see what happens when we turn the heat gun back on. You can see it's at about almost 240, no problem. See, it can do a little over 300 for a little bit of time. But now watch, I'm going to turn that heat gun on high, and it's going to spike it, and it's going to trip the overcurrent protection.
Okay, well, I'm glad I did that test again. Uh, you can see it was doing well over 380 amps uh, before it kicked on, uh, or before the overcurrent protection kicked on. So I think that that was because of temperature, probably. So the battery's back, but I want to do a surge test to see if the overcurrent protection will kick on and not just high temperature. So I'm going to turn on a lot of stuff, make it really, really surge. So it's been a, I don't know, minute, minute and a half or so. Let's see if it turns back on. So yeah, so when the overcurrent protection kicks on and shuts down the battery, the battery will shut down for a minute, maybe two minutes, and then comes back. And then when it shuts down because of temperature, it just depends on how hot the battery was, but it was usually under 10 minutes, between five and 10 minutes, and the battery came back. So I completely tested this battery. It easily beats rated capacity. It easily beats rated power. It has overcurrent protection and it has thermal protection. We've proven all of those. But now the real fun begins. I'm gonna take this battery and put it in a real off-grid scenario to show you how powerful it is and how it's gonna be a great solution for any off-grid solar setup. Now here's the battery installed in a real setup. This is my actual storm shelter. And this is a huge improvement because before I had a portable power station that I had to take down the steps every time there was a tornado event and you know it's rainy, it's windy, you get these horrible awkward steps. It was a huge pain in the butt. So this is a huge upgrade. And what I really like about this battery is it's powerful. This is a 2000 watt inverter and normally I would need two batteries to run that. But because this battery can output such an amazing amount of power, it can run up to the 2000 watt invert. So when I'm down here, I can be running my fan. I can be charging my battery. I have a light on. I can have a radio down here. We could be down here for a day if need be because this battery has so much energy. So it's an excellent battery and I would highly recommend getting it. And if you are interested in buying it, please click the link below. If anyone has any questions about anything you've seen today, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your, your input. As always, like, comment, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to everyone soon.